Hello, everyone. Just frog it here. We are going to maybe do some beginner's knitting. I just wait for some people to come in and all that. Let's see, Granny D left a message, but she's going live at three. Um, yeah, so she's live already. She's been live for half an hour. So three her time. Oh, hey, Patty Weed. How's it going? Triple C's here. Hello. Here, I'll put the link up there if you want to come on video. There we go. <clears throat> So I had to push it back a half, half an hour because uh, we were doing some running around. Um, today was the last day of our yarn shop being open uh, due to the owner being sick. So we went and bought a bunch of yarn again. <laughs> and now I'm broke, which makes me happy. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, whole bunch of yarn. Bought, like two bags full of yarn. So, so I have, I'm using my short, short needles that I have because I didn't know if the long ones would get in the way. These are a, what is it? US six. These are a boy, by the way. I didn't even know that until you look at the end of them. US six, so a four and a half millimeter. <clears throat> I did whip up a couple of samples last night and finished the second one this morning to show the different um, English versus um, continental for, for knitting. So this one here is just a straight knit with a with a few yarn overs to make a little bit of a pattern this was done with a um, half size bigger the um, five millimeter needles um, this was done continental I did this whole thing continental right and then this one here I did this one English style so as you can see the difference in size this one here was done with these four and a halves so it's only a half size difference in needle, but English style is a way tighter knit than continental. And this little one can fit right in the center of the continental one. So continental knitting is way looser in my opinion, or how I do it anyways, than English style. But I will be showing um, both styles, it depends on which one you're more comfortable with, and you can switching or whatever if you want to see which one you're more comfortable with. Hey May, how's it going? So yeah, this is our lesson one for for knitting. Um, and then I might go live tomorrow afternoon around the same time to do um, a second lesson because this one here, I'm going to show you guys how to make this super easy beginner friendly um, washcloth, face cloth, um, pot holder. pot holder, if you want to use it for. This is done with 100% um, Burnett Handcrafter Cotton. Um, for starters, if if you don't if you don't have cotton, it's okay. You can use um, acrylic as well, just for trying it out. Um, but I wouldn't recommend doing a dishcloth, a washcloth, or a pot holder with acrylic because it is. Um, it will melt if you use it as a pot holder and it's probably not very absorbent for a washcloth or dishcloth. You need the cotton. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to be using a different color. I'm going to be using this variegated um, denim blue instead. So it'll show up really, really nice on my chrome knitting needles. You can use this as five knitting needle as well. I just chose these ones because they're shorter for the video. I do have my fives with me too. But 
this is what we are going to be working on today is the dishcloth. Okay. So <clears throat> if everybody has their materials. No, it's not. It's knitted. This is knitting. It, yeah, you do go corner to corner, though, because that's how the, the pattern goes. You go from the bottom corner up and then back down to the top. So, yes, technically it is corner to corner, um, this one, but you can do them square as well. And I will show people how to do that, too, probably tomorrow um, when I do the, um, the purl stitch, because this is just knit and yarn overs and um, knit two togethers for the decrease. So this is a pretty much knit knit only pattern. You could probably do a purl too if you wanted the center to look like a knit, like a stockinette stitch. This is um, garter stitch. So you just do knitting on both sides. With um, stockinette, you do knit one side, purl the other side, then back and forth, right? So you have one side that's like flat and it looks like the knitting that you do with Tunisian. It'll look like the actual knitted stitches. But this is a garter stitch, so it's knit both sides. And this is what we're going to be doing today because the knit stitch is probably the easiest one out of the, the two to learn. Um, and then I'm going to show you both um, English style and continental. So this is my right hand and this is my left hand, just so people know which side is which side. Right? That's just how the yarn goes up, Dana. Isn't it pretty? But yeah, it goes from one corner to the other for the dishcloths, but you can do them um, square as well, like do it from one, one edge up to the top edge as well. And you can, there's lots of many, many patterns. I'm just doing the um, basic stitches and whatever. Hey, Heather, how are you? Hey, Yolanda, how's it going? I'll put the link back up in here again if you guys want to come on the video. Uh, <coughs> hmm. And then you can ask all the questions you want. And mom is here today too. She does a lot more knitting than I do, but I have been knitting for a long time. Um, I go back and forth between knitting and crocheting. So um, this one here, I'm using the four and a halves because that's what most um, knitted yarns call for is four and a half, especially for the cotton. You can use a five. So I used the four and a half for this light blue one. And then I used the five for this. So it's only half, half, um, a size up. And with English style, it's way tighter and denser than it is with continental. So this one's done with continental only, and this one's done with knitting. And as you can see, the English style one fits in the very center of the continental one. So continental, it is way looser in my opinion, and it is faster once you get the hang of everything. But yeah, this is the knit, knit lesson only, and tomorrow I can do purl. And I will show you how to do from one edge to up to another. This is the corner to corner, like Dana was saying, yes. Oh, Heather, you're beautiful. It's all right. And it is, it is, nobody cares what you look like. And if you want, you can have your camera facing your hands so we can watch your progress and I can help you if you have any problems. If you don't know how to knit, if you do know how to knit, that's awesome too. <clears throat> but um, yeah, you can always have the camera pointing towards your hands. You don't have to have it pointing towards your face. Um, Especially when you're learning stuff, it's easier if the person that's teaching can see what you're doing. Um, 
But anyways, so we will get started. There's only four people in here, which is all right, too. It doesn't matter. It's a little bit more, um, I want to say, personalized thing. So does anybody want to come on video? I don't see anybody in the background underneath. Don't forget to hit those thumbs up as you come up. I woke up a mess, but I could put my hair up. There you go. That's the spirit, Heather. <laughs> Chit chat. What you doing? Are you coming on? <clears throat> Hey, Mom. Hey, everybody. There you go. Hey, girly. Hey, girly. <laughs> I'm girly now. I guess I better say hi to you, too, right? Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> I can see, I can see people chatting here instead of looking up. Okay, so if everybody's ready. I will get going and nobody at all wants to come on to you didn't get the needles oh no that's okay this video is on um, gonna be on my YouTube channel anyways you can always come back and follow along I'm I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to do this but that's okay you can always go back um, do the replay you can always go fast forward pause rewind whatever how many times you want it will be on my channel okay <clears throat> and then tomorrow I'm going to do the um, pearl one or whatever. I will find a easy, nice pattern with knit and pearl stitches in it. So you can do both. Um, Heather's coming. Awesome. We'll just wait for her to come to the background. But um, so for worsted weight yarn, it's it, you can have the four and a half or the five millimeter. You can even go up to um, a five and a half. It's, it depends on um, what feels better for you. Um, I only chose the four and a halves. I prefer the fives. I chose the four and a halves because these are a shorter needle. And I didn't want the ends on the bigger ones hitting the table every time I move every time I move my needles around. Oh, for sure, Heather. We can wait. I got more time than I do money. <laughs> Honest, because I just spent a whole bunch of money getting a whole bunch of yarn. Um, so let me see if I can find my fives were in here that I was using. Okay, so these are a regular length size five knitting needle, and they're actually quite long. So if I just move that out of the way, so these are the five millimeter, they fit in the screen there. Okay. And these were my four and a half. So if I put these down here at the end of those, see how much shorter they are? And I wanted to use the short needles um, for the live because then my needles won't be hitting the table as much because um, these will, when you have them, they will hit the table and the little ones not so much because they'll be up in the air so and I thought it'd be easier to see the the yarn with the chrome ones than it would be with the little bit darker ones so um, but you can for experimental purposes or learning um, to yeah just grab one of those three sizes the four and a half the five or the five and a half millimeter. Um, so these four and a halfs are a six. So you want a six, a seven, or an eight for US. Because I think I believe those are the numbers for the US sizes. Let me get my my yarn gauge thing here. Okay. So US seven is a four and a half. The eight is a five. And the nine is a five and a half. Okay. <clears throat> so I think these ones are actually bigger than a four and a half. No, they're a four and a half. So it says six on the end, but it's too big 
for four milliliters. So it's technically a four and a half. Okay. <clears throat> Oops. So, uh, oh, hello, Christina. How's it going? Um, so if you're using the cotton to make the dishcloth, um, it recommends on the packaging a four and a half, which is what I'm using. But you can use a five or a five and a half if it's easier for you to see. Um, and I did this smaller one with the four and a halves with the English style. And the bigger one I did with a five. So half a size bigger. And I did it continental. Continental is looser. Um, this one's more dense, as you can see, than the continental. Continental is stretchier. I love doing continental. It's way faster. And I will show both um, techniques here. Um, and found with how you're holding your yarn as to what feels comfortable for you. Um, but I'm just using these four and a halfs because of their be them being shorter. Um, and I did show just show the size difference between there's like a good at least couple inches in size difference between these ones and a regular size, regular length needle. So I just wanted these so I wasn't hitting the table with the ends of them. Yes, it is a hot day. Mom and I were running around this morning um, trying to make it back. We didn't quite make it back for the 1 o'clock. That's why I pushed it to 1.30. Um, hey, Billy, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. Are you going to learn to knit today? I put the link up there if you want to come on camera. Don't forget to hit those thumbs up buttons when you come in, please. We're just waiting for Heather. She said she was going to come on video. She's just making her, herself presentable. Dana, are you coming on video? Okay. So I'm going to put these aside for now. So I learned the English style first, which is what I'm going to show you first. Um, and then I will show you continental because if you do crochet, which most of you do, and if you're right handed, you will hold your yarn for continental the exact same way and same hand that you use for crocheting. It's that easy. No, you don't have to go on. It's okay. <laughs> it's just easier to see if people are learning. Um, it's easier for me to see what they're doing when they when they're face to face or hands to hands. <laughs> Okay, no problem, Triple C. You can always watch the replay, too. So I'll probably be on here for a little while. Granny D had the first message up here, and she said she had to go on live at 3, but she's only usually on live for an hour, so she said she would come in after and check it out, too. But she says she already knows how to knit, but every person does things differently, right? So it's nice to see different techniques and see how people hold their yarn different and with sexy fried chicken joe first when i'm ready then you're my second <laughs> there you go okay so and after the live is um over so mom wrote me out this um, pattern because I haven't done this for a long time. So I did it yesterday and I'm, I'm fine with it. It's easy. Um, hey, Iris, how's it going? Hey, Kathy. 
Um, so mom wrote me out the dishcloth pattern because it's super, super easy. And I can post it underneath in the comments for whoever wants to copy and paste it to wherever they would like to. I can type it out after the video is over and uploaded. And then, um, yeah, you guys can have it in the comments underneath where it shows the yarn and needle size and everything. Um, so yeah, this is the pattern we're doing. It's the easiest basic dish cloth or washcloth or hot pad, but you have to use the cotton. You can't have acrylic in it or it will melt. Okay. If you're using it for a hot pad. So and it's not very absorbent if you don't, if you have acrylic. So this is our pattern we're doing. <clears throat> okay. So I'm just going to put that up over there. This is my needles. I'm using the four and a halfs. Oh, there she is. I see you, Heather. Hello. <laughs> what am I looking at? A wall? A light. There you go. Are you knitting with me today? Hey, there she is. See, doesn't she look pretty? <laughs> oh, you look great. I'm all backwards. The uh, that's okay. Streamyard mirrors. Oh, I thought that was hair. <laughs> <laughs> Just an earpiece. <laughs> Goofy. All right. Are we all ready? This is something. Oh, it's your magnetic light glass with Perfect. a light. There you go. My husband found it during the Michaels. Uh, clearance sales it's usually Perfect. yeah he he found it for like thirty dollars when it's and usually you, about a hundred you use so, it a lot I, I use it at least once every other day probably nice so do Not you know how the magnifying glass part but the light definitely do you know how to knit heather i do you do perfect i do yolanda get up here <laughs> <laughs> she didn't get any needles. I messaged oh. her to ask her to get get herself a pair, a set of needles, and she forgot. This is what That's I have. Okay. Oh, sugars and cream. Yep. That's cotton. That's good. Is that pink and white? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, pink stripes is what it says the color is. Perfect. So. And I'm Yolanda using... says she likes your mirror. <laughs> It's a magnifying glass, Yolanda, so she can see better. These are fives. These are Perfect. sundry goods. I don't know Perfect. If you can see that? Oh yes. These are, are some of those ten dollars. Yes, yes, they're those bamboo ones there you for go. ten dollars. <laughs> it's not doing it. It's still blurry. That's Perfect. All right. Let's. So, are you an English knitter or a continental? Continental. Perfect. So, I'm going to start off with English style because that's what I started off with. And then I will show continental. I'm just going to get my yarn here, my cotton, actually. So. Most people do know how to make a, a slip knot already. What kind of um, are we doing? Do I need extra yarn at the end? Um, not really, because I'm going to actually show how to knit in the end. So you don't have to, you'll only have one end to sew in after, and that's your ending end, not your beginning one. Okay. So you don't, you don't you don't have to have too much, just enough to um, like a like four to six inches, and then just make a slip knot. Okay. Oh, that's not so put it on your one needle. Now there's many different ways to cast on. So um, the easiest, most basic way is you take your working yarn, so not the tail. And you take your pointer finger on your right hand and you roll it you around. Yeah, I don't do, do it this way. This is just a cast on. Okay. And then you're just going to go, your needle's going to go up through the hole on your finger. 
and you're gonna pull your finger out and there's two stitches now. Okay, I'm gonna show a couple different ways that you can cast it on. So your finger goes, and your needle goes up through your finger and you only need four stitches, okay? So your finger goes away from you, down around, and you go up underneath in the loop. So there's four easy stitches. That's your basic cast on, okay? Down and around. And then you go in the one underneath away from your finger? Uh, nope. So pull your finger out of there for a second. And just hold, hold right your yarn. Hand. Yep, that's okay. This is my right hand. My needle is in my left. Okay. okay for right-handed. So you're going to take your pointy finger on your right hand and you're going to go over the yarn and up under. Okay. okay. And then your needle goes on the yarn, underneath the yarn closest to your finger. There you go. And you're going to go up through and you're just going to let that drop off your finger and pull it a, not too tight on your needle. Okay. Let's see. This. Nope. Other way. Yep. Okay. Because you need to okay. make a loop. It needs to cross your yarn. Yep, that's the ba the most basic cast on. And you can do as many stitches as you need with that one. It does make a loose, like, braid at the bottom seam. Mm -hmm. So another way you can do that, I'm not going to show the long tail cast on because that takes a little bit more... Um, yeah, that's what I'm used to doing. Extra, cast on. but you can do a knitted cast on as well. Okay, so you take just your slip knot on your needle. That's all you I want have. Me do this too. Sure, if you want to. I mean, um, I'm just showing a different cast on method, and then I'm we'll good start. with doing one sure. at a time because I'll get confused. no. That's fine. <laughs> So the knitted cast on, this will be on the video anyways for if people want to tr go back and learn it. So the knitted cast on, you're just going to do your working yarn is here. Your tail is underneath. So you have your needle going to go up through and behind in that loop on your yarn, on your needle. And you're going to grab your working yarn and you're going to loop it around the back needle. Then your back needle is going to go down through the hole and it's going to pull up that loop like this. You're going to pull it a little bit loose and you're going to put your left needle up through the hole and let go. Okay. And you do the same with the one that you just made. You go up through the back. You wrap your yarn around the back needle. You push your needle down through the hole. Oh, cool. You pull it. You put your needle up through the front loop and you let go. And you just cinch it a little bit. This is a knitted cast on. This is the one my mom uses all the time. She loves this cast on. Okay. <clears throat> and then you just do it one more time. You need four stitches only on your needle. Okay. So around. Bring your needle up through the hole with that new yarn on there. Pull it a little bit so you have slack. Go up through the, the loop on your right needle and you pull it and let it drop off. So there's four stitches on your needle. Okay, so we're going to start with this then and I can show the other one tomorrow, the long tail one. <clears throat> So I'm right-handed too. So my needle with my yarn on it is in my left hand. And the one that I'm going to be moving is in my right hand. Okay. And my and tail for some reason, still... it does it opposite in the this is my right hand. <laughs> right. So my tail's just gonna hang down in this one. I'm not gonna loop it through. Okay. You can do that when you do long tail. But so for the first row, you're just going to go up through the first yarn through the, like I was just doing with the um, cast on. You're going to put your needle up through the back. You're going to 
English style, I just pinch it with my finger and my thumb and you're going to rope it around the back needle and you're going to bring it down through. Okay. And then as you pull it off, you're going to take off that very first stitch off that back needle so that you have one stitch on your left or right and three on your left. Okay. So that's the first knit stitch. What is she saying? Hey, Miss Southern Belle, how's it going? Oh, she's looking for her crazy. Her needle's awesome. Um, no, my mom, my mom is left-handed, but she knits right-handed. She says because it's two like sticks that you're using. It's different if it's a crochet hook. She says it feels more like a pen and she has to use her left hand. So for left-handed people, you can do this this way as well. Um, <clears throat> but English style is from your, your yarn is coming from your right side. Continental, your yarn is coming from your left side. Okay. So we're going to do this again. You're going to bring the right needle in front closest to you. And you're going to go up through the next stitch and your, your, your needle is going to come out the back. You're going to rope your needle around. Okay. Then you're going to bring that loop up through. And this one on the back here that you went up through is going to pop off the end. So you have two stitches on either needle now. And you're going to do the same thing with the next two stitches. So you're going to have all four needles are going to, all four stitches are going to move to your right needle. Okay. So you're going to go up through, rope it around, bring it up through and pop it off the back needle. So there's three on the right. One I'm trying on not to get ahead of you because that's I mean, okay. People that are learning. So up through. Rope it around, bring it up through the bottom of that one, and then pull it off. So all three, all four stitches are on your right needle, okay? So always move that needle when you're done the row to your left hand again. So your yarn is coming out the right side, and your right needle now is empty again. So this is that you only do, you only knit those first four stitches once because that's like um, a beginning, like a foundation type thing. So this next one, you're going to increase. Um, and the increasing is pretty easy. So you're just doing the knit stitches the same as we just did. Okay. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to knit the first two stitches. Okay. So you're going to rope it around, bring it up through, pop that off. Okay, you do one. You do the same with the next one. Rope it around, pop it off. Now you have two on each needle. So this is where you do your increase. So you're going to rope your, need, your yarn around your needle to come in front towards you. Then you're going to take your needle and you're going to go up through that third stitch. Oh, wait, then you're going to like a pearl. Um, kind of, sort of, but this is going to, this um, extra yarn that's coming out here is going to come over and it's going to act as your third stitch. Okay. Okay. So that's your increase is the yarn over. So when you have your needle up through the back of your, third stitch you're going to rope it around and you're just going to do a knit stitch so you pull oh, okay. it up through pop it off so now you have four stitches on your right right needle and one on your left okay you're going to just knit the last stitch so rope it around bring it up through and pop it off now you have five stitches instead of four
Kathy, um, if you could do me a favor and just because you're a mod, if anybody asks any questions, could you answer for me if I don't catch it? Um, because you already know how to knit and everything. So you'd be really good at answering some questions for me if I miss it. Thank you so much. You're such a sweetheart. All right. So we're going to do the same thing now. We're going to move this needle to your left hand. So the tip is pointing to your right. Your empty needles in your right hand. Okay. Now, this row here is the one we're going to do right up until. Um, so these other, though, my sample patterns, I went to 43 stitches. Right now we have five. Okay. So each row you're going to increase one stitch okay so for the very first one you're just going to keep doing knitting you're not doing anything else you're just not purling or anything you're just knitting okay so you're going to go okay. up through the first stitch rope your yarn around bring that up through pop it off you're going to do the first two like that okay up through rope around Bring it up through and pop it off. Now the third, before you do the third stitch, you're going to pull your yarn around that right needle and close to you. Okay. And then just hold it over the needle for a second. Now you're going to, this one here was your increase, your yarn over from the previous row. So you're going to go underneath that stitch and you're going to rope your yarn around the back needle you're going to bring it up through and pop it off so now you have four okay. four stitches on one needle and two on your right knee on your left needle okay then you're just going to knit the last two stitches just normally okay like so so now you have six stitches so you increased one because last row we had five and the beginning row we had four okay so this is the same row we're going to do all the way until you have 43 stitches on your row okay so you're going to knit the first two you're going to do a yarn over and then you're going to knit all the rest to the end of the row okay so knit the first two stitches Knit the first two. Hang on, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, and then you do your yarn over. So bring your yarn around your right needle and close to you. Just hold it over that needle for a second. You're going to go up through the next stitch on your left needle. You're going to do your knit stitch and pop it off. So now you have four on the right and three on the left. Okay, and then you're going to knit the next three stitches, just regular knit, okay? Okay, so now you ha should have seven stitches on your needle. So if you just count these loops on your needle, you should have seven. Okay, and then the next row will have eight and so on and so forth. And you just keep going. Um, I don't know if we'll go all the way to the end, uh, all the way to 43 stitches, but I can just, I can, so I can show you the decrease part too, but you can go to as big, you don't have to go to 43 stitches for a dishcloth. You can make it bigger if you want to, it can go to whatever stitches you want. Okay. So you're going to do the same thing. So you're going to knit the first two stitches. So wing your... Yarn around your needle and then pull up a loop and pop them off. So the first two. Okay. Oh, got ahead of and you. Do, pardon? I said I got ahead of you. Sorry. That's okay. Then you do the yarn over and you're going to knit the last five stitches on your left needle onto your right needle. Okay. Just knit them all on. I'm trying to go really slow. 
Okay, so now you should have eight stitches on your needle. See? See how that's showing up? And it shows up um, the more you get bigger. And it will end up looking like this here. See with the little holes going up the sides around the edge? That's what it'll look like as you keep going. So we'll do a few more here just so we can get the pattern going a little bit here. And then I'll show you how to do the decreases to make it go down the other side. And then you can make it go as big as you want. You increase to however many stitches you want. And then you do the decrease um, at the um, down the other side. Okay. So always knit two. Knit the first two. Okay. So this is English style still because my working yarn's coming from my right hand. And this is why it's called throwing, okay? So you always throw your yarn around your needle, right? So there's your increase. Now I'm going to knit the next one. Okay, and when you do the knitting, you can actually see that you're throwing your yarn around the needle. That's why English style is called throwing. So you just knit all the rest of the stitches onto your right needle, like so. And try not to do it too, too tight. You, you want your, you want to be able to be able to put your other needle up through the loop um, with, with a little bit of ease so that you can get both, both needles in that one loop. If it's too tight, then you might end up breaking, bending your needles. Um, or it'll be too hard to get your your stitches off and stuff, okay? So the next row, you're just going to do the same thing. You're going to knit the first two. Do your yarn over around your right needle. Then knit the next stitch. So then you have four. Then you knit all the rest of the stitches onto your right needle, okay? Lots of people say they love the clicking and clacking of needles when they're working. <laughs> I don't know. If you, I don't think these ones are making much sound because these are like an aluminum needle. They're not like metal metal. One of them rattles though. This one I think because the end is a little bit loose. Okay. So there we go. That's pretty much all you have to do for the increase. So this is super, super easy. Okay. Okay, so. How are you doing, Heather? Oh, that's beautiful. You're doing uh, great. Super easy, right? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't hurt that I was actually making a blanket with this same. same right? Uh, pattern. So, yeah, cotton is a little bit different feeling work than um, um, acrylic and stuff is because it's, it's got that cotton texture to it. So sometimes it's a little, um, I don't know, it's not really soft, soft, but. No, this is like kitchen cotton. Yeah. So yeah, knit the first two. Do your yarn over around your right needle. Knit the next stitch. So you have four on your right needle and then you're going to knit all the rest of the stitches um, from your left needle to your right needle and then I'll see how many stitches I have I'm just going to go go here for a little bit and then I will show you how to do the decrease and then I can take this out and I can show you how to do it continental okay so when you count how many you have I have 11. So maybe I'll go to what what would you recommend for just like to show the increases and decrease? What how many stitches would you go to? About 15 maybe. 15? 15. Would that show the pattern a little bit too? Yeah. Oh, yeah 15 yeah. or 20? Yeah, 15 20. Yeah. So, let's let's go till we have 20 stitches, okay? So okay. it'll be a little bit longer. So um so right now I have 11. So the next row you do, you'll have 12 and mm -hmm. so on, okay? So I'm just going to Probably be a little bit quiet here when I'm when I'm just slowly doing this. I'm hoping everybody can see this. If not, I can use a lighter color. I have other colors. 
this one's kind of a little bit on the darker side. Okay, and then, sitting here thinking we're both knitters. I wonder who can knit faster. But this is supposed to be a tutorial, not a race. You know what? I was thinking that with my mother the other day. And I said, hey, you know, that would make a great video if I get you and me to knit. Because she's been knit. She does mostly knitting. I said, let's see who's faster, your English style or my continental. <laughs> and see who can make a dishcloth faster. And what did mother say? No. She said no. She didn't want to be on camera. Oh. Then she said I'd beat you anyways. I'm like, yeah, right. I don't know. I've heard Continental is faster. I don't know. It is. Since I can't English knit, I can't uh, time myself. Well, you're English knitting now, so there you go. No, no my cam this is my right hand, remember? Oh. So you don't do Continental with your right hand? I'm a crocheter first. Yep. So I hold it like a crocheter. Yep. That's continental. English English style, you hold it with your right hand. And continental, you hold it with your left hand. Because you're doing continental right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which we'll be going over after I show this one here. We yeah. need somebody who's left-handed. Who is left-handed? I don't know is if I know anybody left that's left-handed. What, knitting? Left-handed? Yeah. No, I you said, look, Yolanda Most, most get... people do it right. Well, I think it's like I said, um, even left-handed people tend to do it right-handed for knitting because it's two separate, like, sticks. Mm -hmm. And crocheting, you do, if you're left-handed, you do it left-handed because it feels more like using a pen or a pencil. For draw for writing and drawing, right? It's more yeah. it, um because I I crochet right handed because I'm right handed right so my crochet hook is in my right hand but for mm -hmm. a left handed person their crochet hook hook is in their left hand right yes so I, so. I don't even want to try to attempt to do it, it left handed <laughs> I, it would be very awkward for me <laughs> to try and crochet left handed. Yeah, I think so. I wouldn't even know which way I would I would put my yarn over my hook. Can, it would be I very confusing. Yeah, I can see me getting it all tangled up. Right? <laughs> okay, I have 14. So this doesn't take actually very long to do. It's actually pretty fast. But I find that hands. English style does hurt your fingers sometimes because I use my left pointer finger to push the needle down through all the time. Mm -hmm. So the, the tip of your needle, see how you, how you, how, yeah, you, I, I usually aren't push it down sharp. through. Yes. The lace They're needles are very sharp. sharp. Yeah. These are. I actually took a fingernail file and filed the um, tip to make them sharper when I first oh, got really? all of them. These, I, apparently, I didn't do that well, to these. And that's why you'll see a lot of knitters will use um, thimbles and stuff to put on their finger okay. so that it doesn't hurt their finger because they do push their needle down through like what I'm doing here, right? I push my needle down through the hole and then I pop the, pop the stitch off. Mm -hmm. And your finger... I think I was in Hobby Lobby. I saw this thing. It's rubber or silicone or something that you put. Yep, over they the actually have um, half ones too, where it's just metal underneath and it loops over your finger so that oh. it's metal on the bottom. So it's like a half thimble or something. I don't know. Do they have a special word for them or something? I don't know. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. finger covers. Right. <laughs> just something that won't doesn't hurt your finger. Mm hmm. I think I'm on my, I'll have 15 on this row. I think I just counted it. Well, I did just count it, I think. I think that was the last row I did. 
I just counted it as I did it too, and I have 16, so I have four more to go here. Yes, Mimi, picking is faster. So picking is what they call a continental knitter. Um, and throwing is what they call an English knitter, like I showed you, because you throw your yarn around your needle with picking, like what Heather's doing. It's already over your finger, and your needle comes up and just has to grab that yarn and pull it through the loop. So it's actually faster to do continental. Um, for a crocheter, it's way faster to do continental and it's way easier to hold your yarn to because it's the way you're used to holding it when you do crochet. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So who taught you how to knit? Did your my mom mother? You? My my mother taught me how to knit, um, oh. and my grandmother taught me how to crochet. <laughs> so, um, I got the best of both worlds. Yeah, right, mother. Right. <laughs> I learned how to crochet when I was a kid. I was I was eight years old. I my don't God. think I learned until I was what? Well, you were a teenager, I think. Just barely in my teens, like 13 or 14. And I think I learned how to knit after that, didn't I? Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. My sister's best friend was learning from her grandma. So she taught my sister how to do it. And I was watching my sister. So at the same time. I was learning how to do the each kind of stitch as my sister learned. Oh, I forgot to yarn over. Uh-oh. Yep, I'm tinking. I did two tinks. I've learned how to knit from Marley Bird. <laughs> right? There are so many people out there that, that do really cool uh, knitting techniques and stuff. That's why I said it's nice to watch some other people, even though... Some people do know how to knit already. Some people have different techniques or different tricks or tips or whatever that you can take and make your own or deviate from to make your own or whatever you want to call it. I haven't. Um, I haven't deviated. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I think I have a couple more to do here till I get to 20 and then we'll do the decreases you must you do it faster than I do even though I well and this is English style so I'm actually slower with English style than I am continental so um, and I am trying to go slower so, so that you are definitely faster than me so uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen I've been knitting for about what, three years, maybe, and I've I've made I made a wonky uh, dish towel. I never actually finished. I got right up to the last like ten rows. What are you doing? You're realized, doing great, though, Heather. For I realized for... I had done the uh, increases uh, backwards. On uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. It's all a learning curve, right? Mm -hmm. and that's the fun part you get to make it up if you don't like it you take it back out and you do it again okay so this is my my row with this is gonna be my row with my 20 stitches on it so once i'm done this row then we'll we'll wait for heather to catch up that's that's quite all right and then we'll do the decreases five six Seven. Is that Mr. P in the background? Mr. P. Oh, over here beside me? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> hello, Mr. P. Lana says hello. Hi. Mr. P. <laughs> he says hi. <laughs> well, if I'm Mrs. P, he's Mr. P. Right. 
<laughs> that was 18. I didn't say why, I said who. My, uh, my 16-year-old is over here asking questions about Mrs. P. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I have 20 on my... And this is what it looks like. So there's your, your holes. Here are the increases that you did going up either side. Right? There's your tail where you started from. So it will be a little bit on the square side. But you can, when you sew in that end, you can uh, make it a, a little bit more pointy if you want. But there's the 20 stitches. And it looks like the same on both sides, which is super cool so there's no back there's no front to this it's reversible okay kathy says my great aunt showed me both knit and crochet plus embroidery when i was 12 then my mother showed uh, showed her more right um when i was before i was a teenager i actually first learned how to do um plastic canvas <laughs> My mother was teaching me how to do plastic canvas. And then I got into the crocheting and knitting when I was in, in, in my teens. And yeah, I haven't looked back. <laughs> so I've also branched out on my own. I find different things that I like, like um, different variations of crochet, like Tunisian or um, broomstick lace or hairpin lace or I do the knitting looms and the knitting machines and all that fun stuff and diamond painting, and diamond painting yes that that's super easy so <laughs> um, I also used to do the paint by numbers with the oil paint and acrylic and stuff too so I, I like to put my fingers in a lot of different little pots to try my luck <laughs> But is everybody getting this so far? Is it making sense? Um, like I said, I will post um, the instructions underneath in the comments um, after the video has been uh, ready, is uploaded or whatever, after the live's done. Um, and then you can use the video to follow along if you'd like. This will be 20. Perfect. Can everybody hear me okay? Oh, I can no, hear you just fine. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I, I don't um, know if this, does this make it bigger. Oh, you got your camera. Oh. Um, da, da, da. There you go. There we go. That's better. One, two, three, Perfect. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Perfect. You got your twenty now. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And we're ready to start the decreases. Perfect. That looks beautiful. Thank okay. you. So put your working yarn oh, in your left good. hand. Your empty one in your right, and we'll start our decreases, okay? So you're going to do this this same row over and over until you get down to four stitches. So we were increasing one stitch each row. We're going to be decreasing one stitch each row, okay? So you're going to knit the very first stitch, just one, okay? And now you're going to do... A knit two together so that's a decrease so you're gonna take not this one here but the next stitch and you're gonna go up through this is why you don't want your knitting to be tight you want to go up through both stitches okay so you have your needle going up through two you're gonna wrap your yarn around and you're gonna pull it through so you're turning two stitches into one then those two stitches are going to come off of your left needle. Okay. And now you're going to do a yarn over. So you took one off and you're going to increase by one. Now you're going to do one more knit two together. So take the fur these two next stitches together on your needle. Yarn over and 
pull your needle up through. So you should have four stitches on your right needle. Okay. So you did, uh, you knitted one, you knit two together, you did your yarn over increase, and then you knitted two together again. So now for the rest of the stitches on your left needle, all you're going to do is just knit right to the end. You're going to knit every single stitch off onto your right needle. Okay. All right. So you're going to do this exact same row on every row until you get down to four stitches left on your needle. Okay. All right. Okay, so same thing on this end. You're going to knit the very first stitch. Okay, you're on you're the gonna... picture. Sorry, <laughs> I can wait here. Oh, no, I was just one behind you. I was just, I okay. thought you were going to tell me something about the end. Nope, nope, you <laughs> okay. just knit right to the end. So you knit the first one. You knit the next two together. You yarn over your right needle for an increased stitch. You knit the next two stitches together. So you have four stitches on your right needle. And then you knit all the rest of your left ones onto your right one. Just regular knit stitches. In my mind, so I don't get nervous, I'm thinking, I'm talking to Lana, and Yolanda's out there. <laughs> it's just me, you, and Yolanda. I mean, hi, everybody else, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's just the three of us. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Don't tell her I'm listening. Well, then. I know what you want to look like. Oh. Mom says, don't tell you that she's listening then. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And mom. <laughs> and mom. <laughs> okay, same thing on the next row. You knit the first one. You knit the next two together. Okay, so up through the next two stitches. Knit them off. You do your yarn over. You knit the next two two stitches together okay so you have four again on your right needle and then you knit all the rest of the stitches from your left needle to your right needle just one stitch at a time okay Mother. What's she saying? I she said the her. S word because she uh -oh. started doing the wrong stitches when she's knitting. Uh oh. <laughs> she started purling when she's supposed to be knitting. <laughs> there are two different S words that you can't say, so I was I was trying to figure out which one at first. The the shh. Yep, yep, yep. It. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I mean, this is your channel. I guess you can say whatever you want. <laughs> Joe likes to call it Dookie. So, oh, uh, <laughs> gross, she says, <laughs> oh. so. dookie. Yeah, yep, yep. hey, Nana, carrying yep. whips. How's it going? Chit chat's laughing, <laughs> she thinks it's funny. We're doing great. Damn. How are you? So, knit the first one. Uh -huh. Knit two together, uh -huh. yarn over, 
knit the next two together. So you have four stitches on your right one and then knit all the rest of the stitches from your left to your right. Yeah, I know, right? Triple C dookie. Yeah, oh. that's what he says. Hey, Dana. Love Dana. Love Joe too, but got there because of Dana. Or, or you can put the chocolate emoji down there too, right? That's the oh, same word. <laughs> Some people think it looks like chocolate, but it's actually not. Oh. Yeah, oh, that one, right? <laughs> Yeah. The chalk that's why I said the chocolate emoji. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter has a um a stuffy that looks a lot like a Hershey's kiss, but she says it's a poop emoji. Right? And it's funny when some people do the um what is it? Baby sign language with their babies before they can actually speak words and the motion oh, for no. poop is hilarious. Yeah, I'm <laughs> guessing it's the same as if you were saying the other word. Right? Hey, so same That's thing nice. again. Knit the first one. Knit the next two together. Yarn over your right needle. I'm sure Knit I've seen it. The next the, uh... two the sign my pastor's little boy one of his sons is deaf oh yep well because they had it on um meet the Falkers movies with the little baby oh it's hilarious i haven't watched that movie in years i think there's two movies yeah there's meet the, the first one with the, the baby as a baby and then He's a little, the little boy's a little bit older in the second one. And all the, the poop emoji is you make a fist with your thumb, like you're hitchhiking with your left hand, and you grab your thumb with your other hand, and you go like this. Yep. Oh, and he does the sound sign. too. I have That's seen sign, that. Triple times. There's the chocolate sign. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mom, I said a word and this, this went from there. <laughs> it did, didn't it? Mom, mom started it all. Triple C says, "Hey, Miss Aldis." <laughs> hey, Miss <Aldi. laughs> hey, Dana. <laughs> Perfect. The poop emoji. Oh, the chocolate emoji. <laughs> okay, same thing. Knit one. Knit two together. Yarn over your right needle. Knit the next two together. And then knit all the rest of the ones one at a time from your left needle to your right needle. And you're just going to keep doing this one row all the way till you get to four stitches left. And then we have to cast off those four stitches. So this is just a little sample one because usually you do them bigger than this. But for tutorial and lesson sake, it's a it's a it's a okay size to to learn. Well, this would be perfect to, size for um, a little face one. Yeah, I was thinking a face. It's a little big to me for a face scrubby, but it still work. Right. Of course, the face scrubbies I made they're they're only what? about. Uh, two inches across and they were a little small so i'm thinking more for like the cosmetics type of um yeah like i was thinking for one off makeup face. type thing you know i tried teaching my neighbor's little girl how to knit the other day Oh yeah, and yeah. She she is very good at the long tail cast on. Oh, good. But as soon as I started trying to teach her the knit stitches, they all started slipping off. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, she she got frustrated with that after a couple tries. And yeah, the, once they start getting frustrated at younger ages, it's just you know, give up, give up for now, and come back later and try it again. You know. I think she's 10, so yeah. Yeah. She might be 9. I'm not sure. 
Uh, my daughter's saying she thinks she's nine. Yep, that's about the age, yep. Yeah, so I taught her how to crochet instead, and she can do a chain. We made some bracelets. Hey, Yolanda can do a chain, too. Yeah. She's the queen of chains now. That's what I was telling her. Goodness. <laughs> now Love you, Yolanda. <laughs> teach her how to get into that next stitch going backwards. Right? I'm sure she thinks of it as backwards. See what I do? I've got my... Okay, there's my yarn over and my two together. Oh yeah, look at the rainbows flying around. Do yeah, dri driving the dog crazy. Hey, enough. Stop I do I right now. Two, three, four, You're a little psycho. You're a little psycho, Toad. You're a little psycho, Toad. Hey. Get out of my room, you little brat. Made another mistake, Mother. She's crocheting while she's supposed to be knitting. <laughs> Oh you're, oh, you're crocheting. Oh, there you go. She's actually crocheting. Okay. She's making um, hot pads, hot mats, raised hot mm -hmm. mats. Yeah. She hasn't done it for a long time, though, so. I made, uh, I made one, a uh, pot holder. Uh, it was grandma's double thick stitch or something. I don't remember, but it's really neat. Oh, that sounds of, cool. I think of all my pot holders, I like it the best. It is the thickest. Have you ever made yeah, like a, made... a pocket one or something? Like you can stick your hand inside it like a pocket? No, I haven't done that. Hmm. My husband would probably like that. He mm -hmm. prefers that kind of pot holder. Oh, your hubby does? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Chit chat's laughing. <laughs> the last pot holder he bought that you put your hand in, he melted on the grill. So, oh no, it's melted. He says it wasn't on the grill. <laughs> I don't know how it got <laughs> melted, but <laughs> oh, okay, fine. The time before that, the one for that, uh, it was like burgundy and silvery gray. That one, somebody turned the burner oh, under it. Oh, the burner got turned on underneath it. I've got a electric stove. Oh, yep, that would do it. I think it was a dollar store special, so I'm not sure. It could have been a Walmart special. My hands are starting to get a little tired. Right? English style makes your hands tired. You're doing continental though, so. <laughs> you switched you switched on me to continental. No, I was always doing continental. I don't know how to do English. <laughs> it's the camera. I guess if I turned it around, of course, you might see my mess in front of me. I don't want to do that. <laughs> if I turn the camera around so you can see it how I see it, it'll look right to you. But there you go. I find when you do some of these videos, they actually do look reversed, like you're like you're doing it um, on one side of a mirror, mm -hmm. which is odd because I'm like I'm not doing that with my left hand. <laughs> Let's see. Did you get down to four? I am. Um, no, not yet. I'm going to see what can be seen. 
I don't want a whole bunch of mess in the picture. Of course, I can't guarantee that you'll be able to see what I'm doing either because I can't see the screen this way. Yeah, that's... Okay, I have one more stitch to decrease here, and then I've got my four. Can you see what I'm what I'm holding? Yep. That way? Yep. Do my one. Well, this is interesting. <laughs> in the camera is in between me and my hands. And my phone. Okay. So I'm down to the four stitches I need to be down to. And that's what it looks like so far. Isn't that cute? It's just a little teeny tiny one. It's just a little teeny tiny. Look at that. My fingers are bigger than the little square. <laughs> Stop. Right now. Is he jealous that you're talking to the... No, he's um, squealing because he's chasing the rainbows flying around. See them? Oh. They're flying around on the floor though, and he's he's a little psycho for sh shadows, red spots, and rainbows. So <laughs> I just Funny. tapped him on the side to snap him out of his craziness. It sounds like he's been hurt. But he sounds like he's been hurt and he hasn't, so because he's uh, a, a big baby for a little dog. Now he's licking the floor over my mom. <laughs> <laughs> now you see the knitting needle yeah i'd turn around and walk away too <laughs> has he been poked before no you just have to show him something threateningly and he 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 stops so oh because sometimes we just have to th show a water bottle like a spray bottle a squirt bottle with just oh. water in it and yeah he, they stop what they're doing <laughs> i have to <laughs> shake it at them so they um, the noise. Yeah. Somebody had mentioned when I had my big dog, they had mentioned putting like five to ten pennies in a pop can and sealing it with like tape or something. All I do is like shake it once or twice and it scares mm -hmm. one of their funk, but it sh scared my big dog so bad oh. that I could never ever use that can ever again. So, oh. but this guy here, if you just hit a table or clap your hands really, like any really loud noise, he doesn't like it and he stops what he's doing. So, it works really well for us with him because, yeah, he goes crazy for shadows and stuff. And I have the crystals hanging in the window. That's why you see all the little rainbows on the on the table here. I used to snap to get my dog's attention. Shh. Hey. So now whenever they're doing something, I just snap my fingers and they stop and look and they forget what they were doing. Right. If I snap my fingers, they, they tend to sit down. So because <laughs> that's what they that's what they've been doing all along. You snap your fingers and they'll 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 par park their bum on the floor. Mm. But yeah, any loud noise just hitting your hand on the table or a knitting needle on the table or whatever, or clapping your hands or just showing them a water bottle or a knitting needle um, makes them stop doing what they're doing and get out of their craziness because he's panting really heavy right now. So, All right, one more row, and I think I will be at four. Two, four, five. Yes. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. You got a green line in your. Uh, oh, that's my oh, um. Your circular. Circular. Yep. Yeah. Get in there. There we go. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is my four. <laughs> How's everybody Hi. else doing? Are you are you following along or are you understanding what's happening? Do you have any questions? I know um, Kathy's been really good answering some questions. If you have questions, because I was trying to concentrate on 
what I was doing to show everybody. Is that Kathy MC? Um, Mimi Cat Do, yeah. Oh, Mimi. Her name. Her name's Kathy. <laughs> I forget that. Right. I just call her Mimi. Yep, a lot of people do now. She's like, I'm just Mimi now. I'm like, but I know your name is Kathy, so I'm just going to call you Kathy. Sometimes I call her Mimi. It depends on what comes out of my mouth first. <laughs> That's cool. Did it like almost perfect halfway. Am I still in the camera? Nope, but that's okay. We can hear you. Oh. <laughs> your camera needs to go to your left just a little bit. There you I'm go. Right here. <laughs> See, that's why I set up my um my camera on a box on oh, right. on a raw on my um it's on a tripod, right? Like a camera tripod. Mm -hmm. But I lay the tripod out straight like this. I have the camera facing down on the end and I have the the left side of it um, on top of a box and then I have something um, to weight it down so it doesn't move on me and then my camera isn't I have all this space in front of me where I don't have to reach around anything or whatever and I can see what I'm doing and then I just look up once in a while to make sure my hands are in the in the shot. <laughs> That's beautiful. See, isn't it easy? Yep. Are you ready to cast off? Sure. How do you normally cast off? Um, I just I I knit two and I pull one over. I'll okay, so that's the regular way. Over. Um, I like to do the stretchy cast off. Um, okay. so all you do is knit the first two stitches. Okay, like you normally would. Okay. Okay, but this time, instead of pulling your first stitch over your other stitch, you're going to put your needle through both stitches underneath like you're going to knit them together. And you're okay. going to actually knit them together, okay? Okay. So you're going to pull that up through. So now you have one stitch, okay? Okay. Did you get it? Yep. Okay, so I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out which end is my uh... cuz I'm looking at my TV. I've got it muted and I'm seeing that I am totally off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out which way I want to go to <clears throat> There you go. Fix that. Oh, okay. So you knit the next stitch onto your right one. Then you're going to do the same thing with those two stitches. You're going to go underneath both of them. Bring your left needle up in front so it looks crossed like you're knitting them. You're going to knit those two stitches together. Whoops. Okay. So you have one stitch on each needle. Then you're going to knit the last stitch. And you're going to do the same thing again. You're going to go, your left needle is going to go underneath both stitches and up through the front. Then you're going to knit those two stitches together as well. And you should have one stitch left. And this is the one where you can cut your yarn and then pull that end through that last loop to tie it off like so. But I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to probably pull it out and reuse it because oh. it's a little bit tiny for me but this is just a sample one or well, actually I could probably could just leave it the way it is so I can use it for a sample for later so yeah let's do that I'm just going to cut it cut my yarn then I'm going to pull that tail through my loop and cinch it up so it ties it off so there is your 
sample. Ta-da! Oh, yeah. So this is the English style, okay? So let me get a little bit lighter yarn because I think that one's harder to see. Oh my gosh, I can't move. Okay, it's sitting. It's sitting. Oh, yeah. Let's see what I got here. Oh, I got some light yarn in here somewhere. There we go. About a little bit of yellow, orange, and white. That's a light colored one. That'll be easy to see. Okay. So I'm just going to put this in my bowl here. Okay. Now I'll just, we'll do the exact same pattern, but I'm going to do it with continental instead of English, right? So English was with my right hand. Continental is with my right or my left hand. Okay. I'm going to use the same needles. Okay. And this time I can show you how to do the um, long tail cast on. Okay. So you're going to take, because we're only doing four stitches. Okay. You don't need too long of a tail, but a good, I don't know, half a, well, maybe a foot, I guess. You don't have to do quite that much though, but about six to eight inches, okay? And you're going to, I, I like to make a slip knot still. Okay, you make your slip knot, whoops. Like so. I put that loop onto my needle. Now with um, long tail cast on, you hold your needle in your right hand with the other way you hold it in your left hand, okay? So, and I want my tail on the ups, upper side with the yellow here. And the white end is my working yarn. It's gonna be on the bottom, okay? So I'm gonna put my finger and my thumb from my, my, my left hand in between those two stitches. I'm gonna split them open and I'm gonna pull them up like this, okay? So I'm grabbing these two strings with my with my ring and my pinky and you pull them up like this, okay? And then you're going to take your needle, you're going to go up under this one, over the yellow one, your tail, and back through the hole you made with the first one. Then you're going to pull your thumb out and you're just going to Pull it tight to your needle. So there's two stitches. We're going to do that two more times because you still need four stitches to start this work, okay? So you go in between the tail and the working yarn. You bring up your fingers. You go up under the one on the thumb. You go over the tail where the yellow is and back through the loop where your thumb is. You pull your thumb out, and I use my thumb to just cinch that up. So there's three stitches. We're gonna do that one more time, okay? So under the thumb one, over the tail, back through the thumb, pull your thumb out, and my thumb moves the working yarn to cinch it up. So there's your four stitches with a long tail cast on. So now your tail is at the exact same end as your working yarn. The other way your tail was at the beginning, the beginning still. And this way with the long tail, we can actually knit our tail in as we're making our stitches. Okay. So you don't have to worry about um, weaving in your, your, your first tail. Sorry, what was that, Heather? I have not mastered weaving my tail in with my knitting. Perfect. So this is new for you. It is. I should do it. <laughs> I'll just wait for you to 
You already know how to do the long tail though, right? Yes. So I don't have to show that again? Perfect. No, no. That's cool. If you need help, let me know. I added you on my new Instagram. It's iris.perez76. Perfect. Thanks, Iris. They're a little snug. Oh, your long tail? Yeah, they're, they're a little better. Okay. Mama's Touch says, I sent you a message. There you go. To my new Instagram. There you go. Ready? Uh, Waiting for me? Perfect. So yeah, yeah. the first few stitches you are going to do English style though. Okay. So you're going to use oh, okay. your right hand to loop your yarn around. Okay. Because you need to take both yarns as one to knit your tail in with your working yarn. Okay. Okay. So it's going to look like you have double the amount of stitches on your thing, but you actually don't. You're only going to have four stitches. So you knit these first four stitches just like we did in the first one. And you're just going to take both your tail and your working yarn. And you're going to use that as your yarn. You're going to put both around the hook or the needle. And you're going to mm -hmm. pull both loops up. See, there's two colors there. So it's, these two are going to be acting as one stitch, not two, okay? Okay. So you pull it off, and then you do the same with the next one. You put your yarn over with your tail, and you knit your stitch. See, now there's like four stitches, but it's actually only two. You're going to do the same with the next two. Just use your tail to knit it in. See, with doing this, your tail is being worked in with your knitting so that when you trim it off, it won't come out and you won't have to weave it in at the end. See, it looks like I have eight stitches, but I actually only have four. Okay. Alrighty. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. That's okay, Iris. I don't care. Go ahead and type all you want. <laughs> That's okay, Mimi. We don't mind. I think everybody was really quiet anyways, and they're just talking amongst themselves while I've been showing this on the video here. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the next row is your very first increase row, just exactly the same as we did the first time. So you're still going to use your tail because you still have a little bit of tail left. You're going right. to take the first two as one stitch, okay? You're okay. going to loop your yarn over and you're going to pull up a stitch. So there, you're going to do that with the next one as well. So you knit the first I'm out two. I'm out of tail. Okay, then just let it drop. Because you won't need it anymore. You're just going to be doing one, um, you're just your working yarn. So your middle stitch is your increase. You're going to bring your, your yarn around. You're going to knit the next stitch. Okay. Like so. And then you knit the very last stitch. Okay, and there's my tails done too. Alrighty then. Okay, so these first four stitches look like there's two strings for each, which there is. And then the last one, because I ran out of tail too, it's just going to hang there for now. I'll snip it later. Um, so when, so you should actually have five stitches. So now I can do this continental style, okay? 
Now I'm going to really try to go slow here because this is my the one that I use all the time. So I hold my yarn the exact same way I hold it for crocheting, okay? So my yarn goes over my pinky and my ring finger and behind my middle finger and my pointer finger. These two are the ones that are grabbing my yarn, and that's my tension, okay? That's what holds my yarn from going too slack. But I have both fingers with the yarn going over them, okay? My middle finger is right here. It's pinching my needle with my thumb, so I have something to grab onto. So this is what it looks like when I'm holding my yarn, okay? My pinky is my tension because it's holding on to my yarn and it kind of sort of rests on the needle. My ring finger is over top of the needle as well for helping to hold it. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> hmm. I do it over my pinky. Under the two in the middle and over my Yep. That's how I was shown how to do it. But then when I had it going under my middle finger, I mm -hmm. found that my, my tension was too loose. It does help having it go over your middle finger as well. Because when this one moves, your yarn goes over that middle finger, which stops it from being as loose. You can go for it, Clumsy Mumsy. Anybody can drop anybody's links if there is new people or if they still want them um, dropped or whatever. I don't mind at all. Okay. So we're just going to knit the first two. So same thing. You just put your needle, your right needle, up through the hole in the back, right, of your first stitch. Now, this is what's different with... Um, continental okay you don't have to throw your yarn around the needle your needle on your right side is going to go around and the first one is the hardest one to get going okay so when I put it around I use my finger on my right hand to hold the yarn off to the side so it makes that loop and then you can make it easier to go through that very first stitch and pop it off okay now the second one all you have to do is go up through i'm going to do the same thing because i have i have two loops on each one of these here and then you pop it off but this is the one where you have to do your increase now so for yarning over just put your yarn over that right needle right so you just loop it around okay and then you're going to go up through and you're going to grab that yarn and you're going to pull it down through. So now you have four loops on your right needle. Do you want me to do it again? One, two, three, four, five. I have five. So I have four on this side and two on this side. Did you do your oh. um, yarn over? Uh, you did two last time. You would do two knit stitches and then a yarn over before. Yes. Okay. I missed that this time. Um, That's okay. 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 I have one, two, three, four, five, six. How did I get ahead of you? Nope, you're okay. It's just because you probably just knitted the last two, that's all. I haven't done that yet because I stopped after the increase and then one more stitch. Oh. Right? So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go to the end. So there is my six stitches. So my tail here is cinching up just a little bit because of those those um, together stitches. 
being a little bit, but you can just snip that off after and you won't have to worry about it coming undone. So just move your needles around, grab your yarn like you would, like we just showed for whoever makes you comfortable in your left hand for continental. Okay, now you're gonna knit the first two stitches again. So I always do the first one with my finger just because there's nothing, um, no, um, anything on your right needle yet. Okay, and then this one here, you're just gonna put your needle up through and you're just going to grab that yarn and you're gonna pull it through. See, I'll show you one more time a little bit closer. So with, with uh, Continental, all you have to do is go through here, make a little bit of a hole underneath you grab that yarn and you pull it up through. So there's no yarn throwing. This is why Continental is called picking or plucking, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and then you pop that yarn off. You do your increase, so you yarn over, hold your yarn over with your finger. You're gonna go up through this one and you're gonna grab your yarn. Okay, because you can see it clearly because there's two different colors right here right now. Okay, so my yarn over, put my finger on it so it doesn't go anywhere. I'm gonna make a hole underneath this next stitch and I'm gonna pull that yarn through and then pop the old one off. So now there's an orange stitch there where there was a white one, okay? And same with this one, you wanna make your hole, you wanna pull your yarn through underneath and pop it off. Okay, you're gonna do that the rest of the way. Up through and pop it off. Make your hole and then pop it off. Okay, so you should have seven stitches on here now. Okay, we're gonna do that again. So I, don't have, I, don't have to, I don't even have to drop my yarn to move my, my needle around. All I do is twist the needle around. Okay. So we're ready for the next row. We're gonna knit the first two. And like I said, I always use my finger from my right hand to hold that yarn so you can pull it through that hole for the very first one. The next one, you just make that hole underneath and you just take the tip of your needle and you pull up a hole or a stitch underneath and then you pop it off, okay? This is your yarn over for after your second stitch. So you put your yarn over the needle, you hold it with your finger, you go underneath the next one, you grab your yarn coming from your left side and you pull the stitch up onto that needle and then you just pop off the old one, okay? Then you just knit the rest of the four, like so. And you're just grabbing stitches so now you should have eight, okay? And that's what it looks like so far. And then you just turn your work, grab your yarn again, and you're ready to go for your next one. So I think we'll just do the same as we did with the other one. We're gonna go up till we get to 20 stitches, and then we're gonna decrease them. You do the exact same way you do as the first one, only you're just holding your yarn in with your left hand instead of your right hand for continental, okay? So the first stitch, the second stitch, yarn over for your increased, third, sti third stitch becomes your fourth, okay? Then you knit all the rest of them down the line, all over from your left needle to your right needle, okay? Just like so. And then all I do is I spin my needle. I don't even have to let go of my yarn. It just stays on my left hand and you continue on with the rest of your stuff. So this is what makes it a little bit faster. You don't have to keep throwing and dropping your yarn all the time with your left hand or your right hand. So the first stitch is a knit. The second one is a knit. 
Your third one is a yarn over increase. Your third stitch becomes your fourth stitch. And then you knit all the rest of them down the line. So all you're doing is opening up a space underneath that stitch. You're pulling your yarn up through and popping it off. Okay. So there we go. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have 10 stitches. I am halfway there already. And you're just going to keep doing this until you get to 20 stitches. And then we'll do the decrease part. Okay. So there's one. There's two. Yarn over will be three. There's four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, Hello? ten, Hi, Keith, it's Mom. and eleven. Um, what are you, what are you doing right okay. now? Okay, so this is why, um, as you can see already, my continental knitting is way looser. Then my English style throwing knitting because your stitches need to be a little bit looser so that you can make that opening underneath your stitch to pull your yarn through. So we're going to do it again. You're going to go, you're going to knit the first two, okay, like so. Then you're going to do your yarn over for your third stitch. You're going to knit 11, 11 the next one. And then you're going to knit all the way to the 11. end of the row. Okay. Well, I'll knit you know, I'll, I'll figure out how to get out of the back of my truck after. But I just need help to get it right away. Okay. Next row. See, you're already faster than me. Sorry, I'm trying to go slow. Okay. I'm trying no, no, no. to go slow. I can't help it. No, it's fine. That's why I said continental is my forte. <laughs> and I do it even faster than the English style. So, um, oh, yeah. So, knit the first one, knit the second one up through the hole, yarn over and hold it with your finger. Knit the next one. So I have four. This will be five. Oh, somebody else to help too? And six. Okay, I'll be over in a couple of seconds. Of course, you're using metal needles, which are just that teeny bit okay, Eight. Nine. I like the bamboo needles, though, because they grab the yarn. They don't let it 11, slip off so easy. Twelve. And thirteen. Okay. So there's thirteen. Yes, the metal ones do slot. The yarn slides easier on it. Okay. The yarn slides easier on it. Um, I do have a couple wood ones, but I don't normally use wood ones. Um, and I do have short circular needles, and I have regular longer circular needles because you sometimes have the lace tips where you for like sock knitting and stuff, yeah, the shorter, shorter needles for. I do have a pair people. of nine inch needles, and I love them. I, just I don't have the nine them. inch ones. Mine are um, I use Addy Clicks. Um, I have the two different sets. Like I have the shorter, the shorter needles, so that you can make smaller circles, and then I have the regular, oh. standard size longer ones. But um, yeah, I don't have the actual like teeny tiny sock ones like the chia goo or chai goo or whatever you want to call it uh, hey cj spicy how are you but um mine are clover i got them from um, the only place i've been able to find them in a store is at joann's oh yep yeah. 
Well, you can get the really the the cheapy ones, like the metal ones with the with the clear cord in down in the center of them at like Walmart or something. But those ones aren't. Um, they don't sell nine inch needles. Interchangeable. They're not interchangeable. They're they're one size, and then you have to change to a different set for another size. Um, the ones that I have are interchangeable. Like you can take the cord off of the the needle and move it to a different size needle. Um, uh, I love them. They're I'm amazing. Changing. Your sister wants to learn this. Hey, Ant Man. So this is actually technically a live tutorial. So if you can, if she wants to learn, she can actually go to the beginning of the video and watch it from the start because I do show it both ways, English style and continental. We're doing the continental right now and we're just doing small little samples. This was the English style. And then this pattern here, you can do whatever size you want you just go up to the amount of stitches you want and then you start your decrease from there but tomorrow i'm probably going to show i'm going to do this again at probably one or one one thirty like i did today and i'm going to show everybody how to do the the pearl stitch um so that you can change your patterns up and you can um yeah it, it's amazing They are very stiff, aren't they? Aren't they, um, Kathy? Um, yes, what? Because they're coiled inside their packaging for so long, and they are a plastic. Um, they do not like to uncoil, so you do have to kind of fight with them a little bit. But I think because they're plastic, you might be able to um, heat them up just a very tiny bit with a hair dryer or something, and just let them hang over a um, shower curtain rod overnight relax. so that they can relax and then they will stay open like that. They won't coil anymore. Um, Cause I do have some, but I don't use them as often as I like to use my Addies because I love my Addies. I paid, I paid their, they're expensive, right? Oh. For a set. But they're so worth it. And I do it. have the Addy clip um Addy Flexi flips, which are a set of three um double pointed needles with a little cord in the center for doing I socks. Grabbed, I should have grabbed my knit picks. I have a set of knit picks interchangeables and they are they've got the beeswax coating on them so they slide, slide better a little bit easier, yeah. Nice. Switch after this because I'm using my five millimeters and I took, I frogged something off of my five millimeters yesterday. <laughs> That's okay. Actually, this is what I frogged. Oh boy. And, yeah, pretty. it's actually an entire skein. It's, uh, what did it say it is? Um, it's, it's Red Heart. Stripe, something stripe. I've got another one. It's still got its ball band on it and everything. Let me see if I can reach it. Well. It must have gotten covered up for right now. I don't see it at the moment. Those are pretty colors, though. I do. I love them. What were you trying was, to make with it that you had to frog? I, it was a shawl, and it was longer than my arms are wide, so it was. So it was be, too big. No, no, no. It's supposed to be longer. It, oh, okay. I'm five three, so it was going to be at least that long. Oh, so you're the same height as Joe? Is Joe five three? I didn't see that part. I got there a little late last night. That's what they were saying in the live yesterday. I don't know if he's listening right now though. <laughs> but he swore he was five four. So and Dana was saying he's five three. So I said, Dana, get your measuring tape out. <laughs> these these are what I've got. Yeah, my mom has one similar to that too, but I don't think she has the bamboo ones. She has 
Hers are um, nitpicks. She's got the different colored woods. Yeah, these are, oh, the rainbow or whatever they're called. Oh, they yeah, were a little like more they're expensive. And these were on colored sale. woods. Yeah. Yeah, these are nitpicks. And the, uh, I got a little um, gift uh, stitch holder with them that they're on something. The wood and ones make then, me nervous, though, because they can break so easy. These seem pretty sturdy for me. Because my one of my mom's um smaller ones broke in hers, and she had a hard time getting the company to send her a new set of just that one size of needle from her set. Because she didn't even use the needle, it broke before she even had a chance to use it. Because of it being um, so tiny, it was one of her tinier sets, like, um, was it a two and a half or a three or something? And it, and it broke. And she was like, oh my goodness, like, I didn't even get to use it. And, and it just snapped right in half, you know? And she wasn't putting any pressure on it at all or anything. And yeah, it's just the wood was so fragile, I guess, that... Um, it just snapped right in half. So they did end up getting her another set of that one size. So she's happy now, I guess, again. I do like my my metal ones, though. I do. They don't make me as nervous. <laughs> the word of the day is big up. Oh, well, there you go. I got 18. I just got to do two more and then I'm, what, oh, where'd she go? Hang on. I just got to call my mom here because they just showed up and they're late. <laughs> hey! Hey! Boys! Boys! Stop it right now. Hey! Hey! Yeah, because you guys are a little late coming. No, so, I know, but yeah. we're in the middle of putting that. Carpet. Hey! You want a licking? But it's not far away. Yeah, yeah, we're putting the carpet in. Yeah. No, she was just nervous that it yeah, wasn't. Yeah, I looked and I went, oh. be there, so. Um, okay. So, so yeah, she, what, we're okay for tomorrow? Um, yeah, she said she'll figure out how to get it out of the truck once she gets it back here. She's got her, our, my brother, go. Help her, I guess, right now. One of his friends is going to help too. So. Okay. All right. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, wait. I'll just let her know you stopped by. I, I, I'm just sorry. I just, uh, yep. Yeah, well, I lifted a carpet and pulled my dock over. Okay. But tomorrow morning, shut up. Okay. Okay. Don't look at me. Let's go <laughs> I know, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> All right, we'll see you tomorrow then, Bobby. Yeah, and we'll be here like in between nine and ten. No, no, I'm starting between eight and nine. Okay. So that way I'll be here by nine. All right. And then we'll make phone calls. Perfect. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Take her easy. Don't oh, hurt your, Don't hurt yourself more. Well, you know what? It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> Silly boys. All right. So he, he was supposed to help mom with um 
with getting the sod from this guy for our yard, or like a little bit of, of grass for our yard. And he showed up late. So <laughs> she took off without him and he just showed up now, but he hurt his back a little bit. So yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Um, so my mom is using my brother and one of his friends to get it and bring it home. And then hopefully they will help her unload it as well. And then I will let her know that he had stopped by because it's what, 3.30 here right now. So um, yeah, well, when you hire somebody, you kind of want them to be on time. These guys always seem to be an hour late all the time. So we'll see. They're nice guys though. And they do really good work in such a short time. But we'll see what she says when she comes back. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. 17, 18, 19, then we'll do one more. I know, right? You died again? Hang on. There you go. Um, I had to answer the door anyways because um, Bobby showed up late to go help get sawed so that's okay five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and there's my 20 stitches that I need. Okay. Lana's dog's scared of me, as Joe would say. Right? Sorry, they was barking because there was somebody at the door and then they wouldn't stop and yeah. But they're good now. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I can do it again for you, too. It's no big deal, Heather. I can start from the beginning if you want me to. So I'm going to do the decrease now for the continental style decrease. So, oh, there she is. She's coming back in. There we go. There she is. Hey, You're back. Sorry. I'm all plugged in now. Perfect. Okay. And I got switched over. Do you have your, do you have 20 stitches on there? Oh, no, not yet. I've got one, two, three. Okay. <laughs> 17. Right? Yep, just the dogs. Nothing major. So yeah, you can already see that my continental is way looser than my English style. English is quite a bit um, tighter and more condensed than um, continental is. I love doing the continental. It's um, way faster and easier to, to do up, so... I like tighter stitches, personally. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. It's sort of getting loose, and then I've got... It starts... Uh, that next yeah. stitch pulls up. And I'm like, it, yep, you don't want them nervous. too loose, but I just find it a little bit looser to get your needle into the stitches to do what you need to do, right? Mm -hmm. They're easier to pull apart and stuff. So this will make 18. 
Are you not that far behind? No. It would be kind of fun to get um, uh, a few people that know how to knit, like um, Mimi Cat Do, Kathy, <laughs> mm. and Heather, and whoever else would like to do it to do our stream yard and just see, just do like a. I'm pretty like sure a, Dana said she knows how to knit. She does. She says she doesn't do it very often, though, but um, hopefully we can get her into doing this, too. And then um, we'll do, like, a a timed thing and see who That's does it faster. Right? That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, there we go. We'd all be pulling out our slickest needles. Right? <laughs> I probably wouldn't be using cotton, that's for sure, because cotton, I find oh, no. my hands get really clammy mm. with the cotton because it's um, a warmer a warmer um, fabric to work with. My hands get all sweat, start to get sweaty if I'm hanging okay. on to metal needles and stuff. Yeah. But And it's that, uh, that little bit, I don't know, it feels thicker than regular yarn or acrylic yarn. Right? It has a certain texture to it. Mm -hmm. It's denser. Yep, yeah, that too. I think it's only four ply though, isn't it? I think it's uh, four yeah. ply. Yeah, there's only four strands to it. Yeah, but you yeah. know how you can you can squish here, let me grab it. You can squish the um Acrylic, yeah. Acrylic. Whereas you get this and it, it is Yeah, this one's uh way denser, yep. That's okay too. Mom was um we were looking up last night a bunch of different um knitted um cloths like this and I came across a couple and mom I actually put them up on the TV and mom did one of them. I'm gonna show you her her work <laughs> without her knowing. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> so I came across a couple really cool knitted patterns and mom ran away with it. And this is what she did. So this has 14 oh. points on it and it's done on straight wow. needles. Oh, cool. But we wrote I've down the patterns like that. And I've, I've Got them tucked away. I'm gonna do yeah, this one we, day, and then I never. Did. We wrote down the pattern for it because Mom wanted to try it because I put it up on the TV to watch it on YouTube, and she loves it. <laughs> it's different. It keeps her interested in it a little bit. But yeah, you just do the point. The for the each point is a section, like from here to here is mm -hmm. one section that you do and you just do that one section 14 times around to make these points and then you whip stitch them together right you said you whip stitch them together yep the the uh, the beginning and the end of it you have to whip stitch them together hmm. or sew them together or whatever you want to call I it know what a whip stitch is. that's where you just keep going around in the same direction you go through, you pull it around, you go through again the next time. Yeah, it kind of, it, it's supposed to make it look like it's, um, um, it's not seamless because you can actually see the seam here where she started and ended. But, um, yeah, it works really well. And this is actually kind of a cool pattern. And it's not a bad size because I have really big hands. And this fits my hand just perfectly from palm to fingertips. Mm. So, and it's actually a really cool shape. It's kind of neat. But there's a few other um, washcloths I'd love to try. Two different patterns and stuff. Like there's patterns that have like a uh, shamrock in the center of them that you can do with knitting. I really want to find that one because that one looks super yes. easy. And all it is yes. is knits and pearls to make the, the pattern, right? And that one's done square. It's not done... Um, corner to corner like what we're doing right now or around. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you just make it so that you're, you're, it makes a pattern in the center. It's like the uh, the knit version of filet crochet. 
Yeah, kind of, sort of. Yep. Except it's solid. It's not. It's right. not got holes right. in it. Right. Um. But yeah, there's so many different patterns and whatever that you can make of them. Okay, I've got my twenty. Oh, Mimi's here, trying to come in. Perfect. Mimi. Thanks, Dana. <laughs> there we go. Let's move this to a little bit better screen here. Where is she? Coffee. There she is. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Mimi. Can she hear us? Or is she counting? <laughs> I don't know what she's doing. Are you frozen? Yes, she's frozen. She would have been done counting by now. Looks like she's. Is there scope? Oh, there we go. Oh, wait, moving a little bit. Oh yeah, look at she's doing one too. Colors. Perfect. I love those colors. I like color changing yarn and mm -hmm. all, and uh, uh, this type of yarn. It's awesome. I love the different colors. Her camera's freezing on her, though. It is. Oh, snap. Right? She's frozen. I know. Yep. Sweetie. There, we can hear a I little bit. You. Okay, we're ready for the decreases for. How you doing, Kathy? Hi, you honey. Your screen is frozen. We can just barely hear you. Dog is snoring. He's on the couch beside me. <laughs> that's yeah, really, I can hear you. That's can really you hear me. Funny. Yep, we can hear you, but your screen keeps freezing every so often. That was really pretty colors you had. Says everyone can see me. Yeah, we can see hear me. Your face. Yeah, we but can see you. Moving. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do the decreases the exact same way we did the other one, only we're just holding our yarn continental style. So you knit the very first stitch. You knit the next two together. Okay. Go up through both stitches. Knit them together. Woohoo! Hello! Hello! That's the crafters, secret crafters. Right? <laughs> so your yarn is very similar to mine. So I'm using sugar and cream. Mine or, or Kathy's? Mimi's. Yep. Like girl. So oh. you do your My yarn over. My little... She knit the next two. Knit the next two together. Hope you got her quiet. Then knit all the rest yeah. of the stitches to the right needle. Ooh. Okay. Kathy, you're, oh. you're breaking up, Fair. Kathy. I'm doing Honey, how are you? We're, we're good. You you keep breaking up on us, though. Do you have extra windows open? Some springy. Like if you got a spring in there, make it boing. Right, and you just flick it like the ones you used to do behind the door. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. And. The Okay, we're just going to keep doing this same row with a decrease until you get down to four stitches again. Yeah. 
What is going it's on? Some... <laughs> he tried going out and coming back in. Kathy, try going out and come back in again. Oh, oh. sorry to do that wrong. Yeah. I can, put, I, can put the link, I can put the link back up for you if you want to go out and come back in and maybe it'll fix your... There we go. There's the link again. Okay, so knit the first one. Knit the next two together. Do your uh, yarn over that. for your increase. Knit the next two together. And you have four on your right needle. Then you knit all the rest of the stitches from your left needle to your right needle like we have been doing. And you just pull your yarn through the loop and pop your stitch off. Uh, device is not connected. Oh, where is she? Uh, Mimi's trying to come back in again. That's what it said on the screen. Let's try this again. There she is. Oh, she's still frozen. Yeah, she still freezes. There we are. See if that improves. I can hear it better. It's a little bit better, yeah. Yeah. It's really lagging today. Yeah, your screen keeps freezing, but we can hear you. Yeah, I don't know. It's screwy internet, that's for sure. Right? Are you doing the same dishcloth as the rest of us? Yep. Perfect. I, I cast I on four. Yep. And then... And I knit it up to 24. Okay. Then I started my decreases. So I'm on the decrease end of it now. There you go. I love the colors yours is in, though. Yeah, That's really it's pretty. colorway. Um... Valentine is the colorway. I got it at Hobby Lobby when they had a 30% um, off sale. Oh, there Regular you go. $2 yeah. $2.29 a little ball like this. Oh, that's good. And I got it for 30% off, so I bought like six of them. Oh, awesome. yeah. I just bought and a made my daughter-in-law birthday. Uh, um. Oh yeah. What about your daughter-in-law? I didn't catch that. So it's like her birthday was in February, so that's why I, was, oh. I chose this color. Okay. She's a Valentine baby. Oh, yeah. There you go. February. Yep. yep. Tomorrow I am going to go live again at uh, one or start one. Start supper pretty soon. And do the uh, pearl stitch. I'll find a different. Uh, cloth pattern that has a little bit more of a pattern on it to use the pearl stitch with mm -hmm. and then you can do the pearl stitch tomorrow because this is a yep. super this is the easiest to do cloth out there to do so oh yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. yep this is the Beginner's dishcloth. I can see. Yeah, that's the garter stitch. It's really easy. Yeah, just well, because there's no purling in this one involved, right? Just keep knitting. Just, just keep knitting. knit stitches. 
Yarn overs and knit two togethers for the decreases. Just this is a TV dishcloth. <laughs> what you can do while you're watching TV. Now I'll forget to do my yarn over. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Is a mantra. Knit two, yarn over, knit across. Yep. Turn. There you go. And what I do when I'm uh, toes of a sock. Little mantra. I haven't done socks yet. I, I took the sock out that I had started for the first time, but I bought a whole bunch of sock yarn now, and I want to start making co-op socks. So, My husband, he saw a sale last year. He got me a whole bunch of sock yarns, but they're all different colors. So oh, really? I can't do, yeah. Actually, they're not yeah. even all the same brand. Yeah. So they're not all the same size. Oh, really? But you can you can use to make other yeah things no, too. Heather, no. shawls, scarves, hats. You don't have to use it just for socks. Yep. No, yeah, definitely. I've got well, to buy yarn is awesome. You can mix, mix and match, though, too, if you still want to uh, do socks or whatever. You can always do, like, your, make your own stripes by just changing yarn colors and stuff. What I really want to do is make some stockings, make something that goes up above the knee. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Christmas stockings? Sorry, what? Christmas stockings. Oh. Well, I've that's got one heard. that's purple and black. I've got some blue and brown. Buster. Uh, some pink. Well, that's and not bad. Pink and black, maybe. I haven't looked at them in a little while. They're in a drawer in my bedroom. <laughs> yeah, I have a sock yarn drawer. That's you great. have a sock yarn drawer? Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. I probably need to find myself a sock yarn drawer too. So I can put all my sock yarn in it and then I have to make socks, right? Right. Hang on one second. I'm just going to mute. I mute have my three drawers of socks. You guys and talk. a closet okay? full of yarn. Uh -huh. Hang on. I've got, I've got about a quarter of a closet full of <laughs> yes, yarn. Yes, I skip along. <laughs> I've got a corner of my bedroom. Me too. I'm about to acquire some more bags of yarn someone's giving me. I'm not going to. I'm going to let those awesome. sit in the truck for a few days, though, because yeah. her, her mother is sick, and just in case. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to let hubby uh, get them. Yeah, a friend of mine gave me something. Yeah. Hand sanitizer and all that good stuff. Awesome. I might just lice all the bags on the outside because the yarn's been sitting in the bags for for forever, as far as what I understand. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Have a little the sun the sitting in, in the bag. There we it go. Should be okay. Sorry about that. 
mom came in the door and yeah. I had to explain. I told him what was going on. So I told him to hey. say that he kills it. Yeah. I said we should just ride to Walmart afterwards and let it sit in the parking lot for an hour or two. You're letting what sit in a parking lot? For yeah. Me? The bags of yarn. He didn't like that idea so much. Not careful <laughs> enough. <laughs> clumsy Mumsy's back. Hello. Hi, Clumsy Mumsy. Hi, Mimi. I wonder if she got the. Um, Hello, sweetheart. How are you, Clumsy oh, Mummy? Oh, I don't know. I messaged her last night after she messaged yeah. me to explain a little yeah. bit. I'm hoping she got it. Did you get your Tunisian going, um, Clumsy Mumsy? I think I told her everything I know, which isn't much. <laughs> you know what you could do, Lana? What's that? My husband's over here snickering at me. I guess me saying that I don't know much is funny to him. Oh, Mimi's frozen. Yes, Kathy, you're frozen. It, I couldn't hear you. It would be really nice if you did a tutorial. Okay, sweetie. I'm going to go back to... I'm going to go out, honey, and just go to the chat. Okay. Yeah, you keep Aww. you keep freezing on us. We love you, Mimi. We love you. Yep. Uh oh. Then she I, I, I was trying to say there. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I've just heard one of them yell no. I know, right? It's like every third or fourth word, right? Well, no, my daughter. She's got a friend over in there in the bedroom. My husband oh. said that it was playful. There you go. My daughter was over at her friend's house for about four days. So. Ooh, peace and quiet for four days? Yeah, my, my older one. She's 16. She is very quiet. Yes. What were you trying to say, Kathy? You want me to do a tutorial on what? What were you yelling no about? Apparently, we're having a little bit of an ant problem. In an bedroom. ant problem? An ant. I think a, everybody is right now. It's an ant on her friend's face, and that's why she was yelling no. Oh. Ants do not like cinnamon. So if you sprinkle cinnamon around the inside of your wall, just at the base of the wall, you won't have that problem anymore because I actually did that uh, last year, the year before. Mm -hmm. We were having ants in my bedroom at the head of my bed. And I hey. sprinkled cinnamon all along it, and I haven't seen any since. Not Wow, that's awesome. So Kathy's saying maybe I could do a tutorial on Tunisian with double crochet hook with cables. She has one, but don't know what to do with them. I sure could do that for you. Or I'll give it my best anyways. Tunisian with double crochet hook. So it's... um. Like a like your circular needles, only you have crochet hooks in instead of the needle on each end, with right, the right. cable in the center. Yeah, I want some of those. And um, I have a couple of them. I don't have a lot, but you can do like oh. um, hats it and just stuff. What that meant? Double crochet hook, one on each end. Yeah, I want some. You can do ha you can do Tunisian hats, like toques. Oh, that would be neat. Mm-hmm. 
So I have my four stitches now. I am down to... Seven. Perfect. I'm just going to snip off this little end sticking out here. I don't need it anymore. There we go. Done. One last end to sew in. It's awesome. I don't like sewing ends in. Yep. I will. I'll give that a. I'll give that a go. Um. Kathy and hopefully everybody will like it because I love Tunisian crochet so I have not done a hat though before which will be really nice and interesting for me to do something different and yeah I look forward to that I'll have to do a proper tutorial on the knitting and stuff too um, and some more crochet ones I have to get to making more. Um, she finished her mini dishcloth. Woohoo! Right? <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that a great feeling when you finish a little project? <laughs> Feel like you accomplished something? Yep. Me, I started a Tunisian lap and last night. It curled up like a hot dog. But today oh. I received the right hook size in the mail. I'm a newbie, so I'm just starting with the basic stitch. Yep. Okay. He says, awesome, thank you. <laughs> Down to four. And then she says, awesome, clumsy mumsy. Okay, so you're going to do the exact same thing for casting off as we did with the other one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you knit the first two stitches. All right, then you put your needle underneath both and you're going to knit both stitches together. Okay. Then you knit one more stitch. You knit those two together. Okay. And you do it one more time. You knit the last stitch. Then you knit those two together. Like so. There we are. Okay. Then all you have to do is cut your yarn. Give yourself a tail to sew in. And you just pull that yarn through your loop, cinch it up, and there is your your second one. So the blue one, I did English style. The orange and yellow one, I did continental, same pattern, same size needles. But as you can see, the blue one is a little bit smaller than the orange and yellow one because English style is tighter than continental so yeah that's all there is to it and then tomorrow i will come live again um around one or two one or 1 30 p.m and we will do a knit, knits and pearls okay i will find a square claw um cloth to do with just a simple pattern in the center that we can follow and we can do one of those all right the same size yeah there you go so your ing you did you did both of yours continental though yes i did but i did a different um cast on there you go <laughs> did you like did you like the long tail cast on I do like the long tail cast on better. It's much, if you look, the uh, the first one, it's got a big gap in it. And this was the long tail one. Oh, Mimi says she does English thrower. So she doesn't do the continental. Continental is looser than English style. And I did do both in this video so if anybody wants to know how to do both you can always go back 
rewatch the replay and you can fast forward and pause and rewind as many times as you like. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Look, Dana, it's the chocolate That's emoji. It. That's <laughs> it. She said his name is Alejandro. Oh my goodness, that is so cute. <laughs> the chocolate emoji, look at that. <laughs> That's it. She just had it right here where I could reach over and oh yeah, grab it from her. So she loves Alejandro. Um, so his name is what? Because you can't hold your yarn with your left hand, Kathy. Have you seen that there is actual um ones that you can place over your finger that will hold your yarn for you. And there is some that do actually um, work as a tension thing as well. Like it'll keep your tension for you as well. I do have a couple. Oh, let me show you. I have a few different kinds that I use once in a while. So I have this one here is the one I use the most. This is a clover one. And I can, I usually do it this way. So the thing goes over my nail so it doesn't pinch me as much. But this one holds up to three different colored yarns. This one doesn't really work more as a tension thing unless you're using a little bit thicker yarn, like the worsted weight or whatever, to go through there. Okay. I also have two sizes of these ones here. They hold a different color in each ring. And these ones, I have to use the big one. Um, you can actually, when you turn them, they tighten up on your finger a little bit. And you can have your yarn going through those holes. And then these ones here are a boy they say on them each one come you, i got two sets only because one um the blue one on the one broke but these ones have three different sizes so the blue one is for bigger yarns the pink one is for medium weight yarns and the yellow one is for smaller yarns so these ones actually will, um, let me get my yarn here, will actually hold your yarn in there. But if you use the smaller one for the worsted weight yarn, it will actually count as tension because actually you see it, it does go right with it. Like I have to pull to get it to go through there. If you have this on your finger, this will work as your tension and all you do is you take it and it just snaps on because this is just rubber. It snaps on with the two little pegs in the back onto the finger thing. It just... Oh, so you have different sizes for your fingers. They do. So this one here is just a silicone rubber like elastic -y one so this will fit pretty much any finger and it just goes over your finger like this and this one here you can use as a tension one so this is the boy one and it works really well it only slides when it gets pulled it doesn't slide otherwise it just stays there but this one has the three different sizes and you can use three different colors all at the same time too. But yeah, there's many of them out there that you can use that could help you with um, if you have bad hands and you can't hold the yarn for in a certain hand, it will um, do that for you. Are you reading comments? Um, yeah, I'm just seeing what people are saying because I was just trying to explain the um, uh, the yarn finger holders.
I'm looking at the top. It says, love you, Dana and Joe. Tell Jesus we said hello. Is that Jesus or Jesus? That's what I was reading, too. <laughs> Looks like Jesus to me. Yours actually with them placed like that look like earrings. You know that? Oh, they're going to church. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, because they said they were getting ready for church. Yep. That's why. <laughs> that makes sense now. I was like, no right? I ain't today. Am I reading that right, too? <laughs> I even bought one from Etsy. That was so costly. That will not help me either. Oh, no. I've tried those two, but can't do it. I've knitted the same way over 40 years. This old dog can't learn that trick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mimi, you're funny. A lot of people actually do crochet themselves their own... Um, yarn holder for their finger too that could be one thing that you could try to because then you could use like the smaller um yarns like the lace yarns and you can make a um like a ring that you can oh, yeah. put your yarn like um hook your yarn through and then go from there the way i do it i'll have to try and make some of those because that actually sounds like it would work really well and then it would the make it. be fit to make it would be fit to your size of finger too, right? My um, pinky against my ring finger is actually what gives me my tension. If this gets loose, then I can raise my finger up some. Right. But that keeps it from sliding around for me. Yeah. That's the same. My pinky is my is my tension. But a lot of people a lot of people have theirs around their pinky. I can't do that. Mine always seems to get stuck. <laughs> I've done that before actually whenever I first right? started knitting I was I couldn't get it to stay or anything perfect so I would, All right. I would wrap it around so that was we've been on here for 2 hours and 40 minutes that's awesome so that's pretty much the end of today I'd like to say thank you so much Heather for coming in and being on video with me that was awesome absolutely I had and, two little face scrubbies now right are you going to try again tomorrow too um probably okay because <laughs> I'll be here because <laughs> you're right? like Karen right sweet, sweet Karen because she'll be here all right so love you all. Have a great rest of your day. And I will probably see you in somebody else's live sometime today because there's always a live going on. <laughs> all right. So thank you so much. Like I said, you can always go back. You can always replay, watch the whole thing or watch parts that you want. Fast forward, rewind, pause as many times as you need. Um, and I will post this pattern. I'll write this pattern out and I'll post it underneath in the comments once the video is completely up and running. Um, Who but, wants to know if Mama Audi is a thrower or a picker? My mom's a thrower. She's English style. She doesn't do continental. I do both because I like to do... Um, Fair Isle and Stranding. Um, so you use multi colors at a time. Or I'll show you. I made I've a seen it. it is so beautiful, but I haven't gotten there yet. So this is one the day. hat in winter that I wear all the time. This is my favorite hat that I've made, and everybody loves this hat. But when you're doing oh yeah colors <laughs> you need to use two colors at once and i like to use english style for one color and continental and it keeps your yarn separate so they don't get twisted together you don't mm -hmm. have to constantly untwist your balls all the time and um you can easily easily do fair isle knit one pearl one and I will hopefully do a video on this as well because I don't like floats at all in the back of my work. So oh, if I, I flip yeah. this, 
This is the back of my Fair Isle work. And as you can see, there are no floats at all. No floats either. I imagine that so ever it would pulled and then it would, all, would have in the back it. of my work. So yeah, I love doing this. It's amazing. And you can do all sorts of things once you learn how to do this here. But I um I could probably do this hat again, or I could do one with snowflakes or whatever on it for a tutorial. I haven't decided yet. I'll probably do a snowflake one for like more winter style, but because it'll be two colors, not, not three <laughs> or four in this case, there was four colors because the gray, the black, the white, and the, the mm -hmm. teal. So, um, but yeah, I don't like floats at all. Um, and it's so much easier when you learn both continental and English to be able to do this without any floats. So, yeah. To figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to say goodbye to everybody for today. And I hope to see you tomorrow. Same time, same channel for knitting and purling. I'm going to try and look up a pattern that is really simple and easy that has both pearls and knits in it. And we will try and do another little washcloth or something that has a little bit of a pattern in it. Okay. So love you all. Have a great day. Thank you for coming. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up yep. and see you tomorrow. Bye everybody. Bye everybody. Love you. Bye Heather. Bye.